In this scene we're going to put together the coin magazine and uh, the coin magazine is a little box um, that sits on top of the crow box and we fill it with coins and uh, during operation uh, it provides coins so that the machine can dispense to the Corvids um, in aid of training. So let's make that. So we need six pieces from our acrylic. There are uh, two coin magazine panels which are made in our light color um, and two coin magazine panels which are made in our dark color. Um, they're all kind of similar, um, so not too hard to find in the parts. Uh, in the light set of parts, light colored set of parts, there are two pieces um, that we call the coin magazine feet, and uh, it rests on its feet, and I guess you probably could guess. Uh, and in order to differ differentiate these parts from some of the trash that comes out of the laser cutting process, there's a couple of diamonds cut into each one of these um, just to help them stand out. <clears throat> so now uh, first step is to peel all of these. All right, now we have everything peeled, and um, you may notice that I'm working on a cardboard placemat here, and I recommend you do the same because we're going to do some cementing, and as always, well, I mean, it depends on how much you care about the top of your work area, I suppose. Um, anyway, let's get started. Now, there's a trick to assembling these, um, which involves alternating the colors of the pieces so that you don't really even have to worry about which is which. It's just kind of encoded into the color um, of the parts. Now this only works if you are using a two-tone color scheme. If you elected obviously to cut your parts from a single color of acrylic then you'll have to match these visually, um, which also isn't very hard because there are two parts, these two which are identical to one another, and then these two parts which aren't identical to anything but have pretty distinctive uh, details. This one having the uh, triangle which points down, and this one having little feet like a space invader kind of. Uh, the feet, we're not going actually, the actual feet of the magazine, we're not going to worry about right now. I'm going to set those just aside um, because we're going to work on the layup of this small box. So, um, there are two ways to do this that I've found. One involves using a rubber band to hold it together, the other involves masking tape uh, in the same way that we use masking tape to um, hold together the actual crow box box when we were assembling that in the first step of construction. Um, now, this is something I've built, I don't know two dozen crow boxes maybe and uh, I still have trouble with this step so it's a, it's a little fiddly just be patient but if you can get this thing in your hands uh, in a square shape then you can throw a rubber band around it and call it a day um, but that sometimes is not as easy as it sounds this I'm still not out of the woods yet you still have to get the band on but with a rubber band in place like this, the forces kind of equalize and um, this part tends to square itself off. Um, but uh, in my case here, I'll probably also check it against the uh, squared lines on my um, little work mat here. That actually looks pretty good. So this is the magazine that we talked about. And uh, this little slot here with the arrow pointing to it, that's where the coins will actually be emitted uh, from the magazine as the machine needs them. Um, the next step here is just to cement, and uh, all we need to do is apply cement along these four inside edges. So let's get going. So I just like to stick the tube in there and draw my bead out, and again, and again, and the fourth time. Now I can see that my rubber band is betraying me and the shape of my magazine is changing so I'm going to set the cement down wobble this just a little bit to work the cement into all the joints and then check the squareness again with my bench and that looks pretty good there is a tolerance designed into this so you don't have to worry that it's you know physically absolutely correct on all, you know, in every way, because the machine will actually handle some of the uh, of the uh, slop for you if if it's not perfectly shaped. So don't sweat that too much. Um, this needs just a minute or two uh, so that that cement can dry down, and um, 
the part will stop shifting in our hands and then we'll cement it to the feet. So we'll take a little break here and then we'll come back and do that. Okay, now that that cement has had some dry down time and uh, this piece has got some rigidity of its own without uh, having to worry about the rubber, rely on the rubber band for strength, um, we can move on and put the, the feet on. So the way that the coin magazine goes in the machine is, as I'm doing here, uh, you can see that there's a little arrow which points down, and that's also the arrow that indicates front. So if this arrow is at the front of the machine and facing down, you're good to go. You just slot your coin magazine into the, into the crow box, and uh, you're ready to deliver training coins. There is one other part, though. We want these feet on, and these stop the coins from falling out before they are dispensed. So. Um, how you put these on is up to you. I sometimes like to try to put these on my bench like this. Just make sure that you're um, cementing them to the side which has the arrow pointing down. Uh, or you'll put them on the top of the coin magazine and it won't work. Um, so I used to do it like this. I prefer actually to put these on upside down, relatively speaking from the coin magazine's perspective. So I'm going to show you how I do that. I'm going to put a I'm going to put a little bead of cement on these edges here, these two. Then I'm going to lower one of the the feet onto that and get it adjusted before the cement. You know, we remember we can float these parts on the cement for a while before they, uh, the bond becomes too strong. And uh, I just want to make sure that it kind of fits the profile lines of the rest of the coin magazine. It's not hanging off uh, in any one direction too much. And uh, this is the look you want. Uh, you want to be careful that you don't pinch it down uh, in any way. You want it to be level with the rest of the coin magazine, just kind of a little extension of it. That one looks good. I'm going to move to the next one. Again, just uh, bead of cement along here to here. Cork up my cement again so that it doesn't dry on me. And I'll put this foot in place and float it around, etc. And then, while it's still soft, have a look at how it fits. And that one also looks pretty good to me. So there you have it. That's a finished uh, coin magazine that's ready to go off someplace and um, cure completely. So we'll set that aside. Um, one last thing you may like to do, I do, pick a flat surface like this um, and give it a little press, which will help seat those feet. Press straight down uh, and that'll help seat the feet so that they are flat. And then we have a funny little coin magazine ready to go.